everybody and welcome to the Movie Pit Podcast. I am your host, Christian. Thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Uh, we have uh, we have quite a podcast for you this week. We have some news items that uh, caused some controversy, that have got some intrigue, and we just uh, had a trailer drop that uh, will sure to please many, many people. So let's get to it this week on the podcast. Of course, as we always start the podcast, we'll be talking about the news items that came out last week after the podcast went up. First one being Marvel's Black Panther adds Forrest Whitaker and more to its very impressive, already impressive, I should say, uh, I almost said podcast, very impressive film. At this point, I think Marvel is really just trying to get every great African-American actor on the cast because that's what it looks like and it's just getting us more excited. So the cast has added Daniel, I'm going to mispronounce his name, uh, Kaliwa, I think that's how you say his name, I don't know, uh, Florence Kazumba and Forrest Whitaker. Of course, the film will be directed by Ryan Coogler, who directed Creed, and already has a cast of Jabbok Bozeman, reprising his role as Chakala, a.k.a. the Black Panther, Michael B. Jordan as the villain Killmonger, Winston Duke, which we talked about in the podcast, I believe last week or two weeks ago, as the villain Manape, Lupita Luongo and Diana Guerra from The Walking Dead, uh, as members of the Dora Magi, also bodyguards and fearless warriors of Black Panther and the Nation of Wakanda. Now, Florence... Uh, Kuzamba, I'm pretty sure I pronounced her last name wrong too. She was already in Captain America Civil War. She played the bodyguard. Essentially tells Black Widow to move, pretty much. And, you know, Black, and Black Panther was like, ah, let's let's settle down here as much as I would love to see that. So she's reprising her role. Daniel uh, Kulaya, I think I'm pronouncing his last name wrong again. Uh, you guys know I'm bad with last names here on the podcast sometimes. Uh, he will play a confidant to Chikala, a.k.a. Black Panther, in the film. And Forrest Whitaker will play someone named Zuri, who is an elder statesman of Wakanda. But I'm pretty sure you don't get Forrest Whitaker just sit around and impart wisdom, although that would be a great scene in and itself, uh, in a Black Panther movie, especially in a Marvel movie. So it's kind of it kind of seems like they bought him in to have a real big uh, powerhouse uh, in a supporting role in Forrest Whitaker, which is fine because, again, Forrest Whitaker is awesome. He's great. He's a tremendous actor when he's, you know, when he's given some great stuff. So... This uh, this lineup so far seems uh, really, really cool. Now, we don't know too much about Marvel's Black Panther, except with what uh, Lupita Luongo kind of let slip at Comic-Con early this year. If you need a reminder, she said the story is that the Black Panther's leadership is really threatened by two foes who come together. And so Black Panther gets the help from the CIA and the Dora Magi to try and defeat the enemy. Now, again, we know that Michael B. Jordan's character, Killmonger, is a villain in the movie. And we know the Duke's character, Manape, will also be the other villain. Now, there is also the possibility that Andy Serkis will reprise his role as Ulysses Claw from Age of Ultron, as he does have a history with Black Panther in the comics. And you'll introduce a character like that without, you know, not bringing him back. So there's that possibility as well. And, of course, there's a certain someone who is also in Wakanda at the end of Civil War that could also pop up but that again is just a rumor as well but we know he's there so that, that we could see that nonetheless black panther starts filming uh next year for a release date in february 16th of 2018 uh, also last week we had some trailers drop that were uh that were films that we've talked about here in the podcast before the first one was uh the trailer for the great wall which is the matt damon led film uh that is directed by visionary director over in china uh, Zhang Yuma, who has directed uh, films like Hero and House of Flying Daggers, and it tells the true, quote-unquote, story of why the Great Wall of China was built, and about the elite soldiers who are the, the last who are the last line of defense between China and these monsters. Now, the film has drawn some controversy, of course, because Matt Damon is really the only <laughs> outlier of that cast, really. Although, from at least from the first trailer that we saw, he was kind of the only outlier. But um, this new trailer brings in other characters. We knew that William Dafoe was going to be in the film, and we finally see him in this trailer. Uh, we see a little bit more Pedro Pascal, a.k.a. Um, Oberyn Martell from Game of Thrones. We see him a little bit more, and we see a little bit more Matt Damon. We see a lot more action in this in this trailer. And again, you know, there's the, there's a whole whitewashing controversy, although the director came out and released a statement saying that Matt Damon's character was always meant to be a, uh, a non-Asian character, but... 
you know, people just like to get upset. And it's not the only controversy we'll be talking about here on the podcast this week. But uh, the trailer, I mean, the trailer does, doesn't look that bad. I mean, I've been, I actually been waiting for this film. I knew about this film for like, like four years ago or three years ago when it was announced. And now that's finally coming out. I'm really looking forward to it. But we'll see what happens. The trailer is up there. If you want to go check it out, the link will be down below. But the first trailer for Power Rangers came out last, or over the weekend, I should say, as well. And that's, uh, it looks really good. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know why my voice got higher, but, uh, that, yeah, I mean, the first trailer came out. It was a teaser, really. But it gave, it gave us a real good sense of what the movie would really be about. And, you know, the tone wise, anyway. We don't see any Zords. We don't see Zordon. We don't see Alpha 5. We don't see, we don't even see the Rangers in suits, although the very ending of the teaser kind of gives us a little sneak peek at, uh, at how they're going to transform, sort of. But um, for a teaser, it worked really well. We get our first look at uh, Elizabeth Banks in action. Uh, she gives a really interesting line in the, in the teaser saying, I've killed Rangers before. So it makes it sound like, you know, she's dealt, obviously she's dealt with Rangers before, but also there's a very big history between, uh, between Rita and the Rangers before the events of this film. So... Uh, the teaser was great. I think a lot of people were really liking the teaser, for at least from what I've seen, a lot of people were really liking the teaser. So we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Power Rangers does come out next year on March twenty fourth, so we won't have to wait too long. But teaser wise, it it, it it I think it lessened a lot of people's uh, hate for it. Maybe I don't know. That was the only Power Rangers news that came out during the New York Comic Con panel for Power Rangers. They announced that Goldar will appear in the film. Now, Goldar, for those of you guys who don't know, was the right-hand man monster, depending on what you want to classify him as, to Rita Repulsa in the original in the original series. So he's going to be in it. There was no word yet on who will actually play Goldar, but um, but the fact that he's announced seems pretty cool. So I don't know. If they're going to have someone um, kind of play him in, you know, very differently, they're going to make him all CGI or motion capture. But uh, obviously they're going to change his look because they changed Rita Repulsa's look. And now they're probably going to change his look. Probably keep it a little bit, maybe, like his old one. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Again, Power Rangers comes out next year. I'm sure we'll get, like, at least two other trailers before then. So, I'm going to wait for that. However, the last bits of news items that came out last week after the podcast went up that I'm really excited about was another trailer, John Wick Chapter 2. That trailer was so good. Uh, I really liked it. I really loved it. it, was, it if you saw the first John Wick and you see this trailer, you know they're upping their game. You know they're just going to just rock it out. It's It looks so good. Um, I'm really I'm really pumped for this movie. So, um, yeah, the... the John Wick Chapter 2, it follows, of course, John Wick coming out. This time he's going to Rome, and he's going to essentially kind of stop someone from controlling the International Assassin's Guild that they're kind of all a part of, essentially. And, and again, it looks really good. I mean, just watch the trailer. It looks awesome. It looks like, they're, it looks like again, they're upping the ante. It looks like, be, looks like there's going to be a lot more action this time around. But uh, John Wick Chapter 2 comes out next year in February. So you can go check that out. Again, the trailer will be linked down below. All right, so let's get to this week's news items. This week was interesting. There was a lot of little tidbit stuff that came out, and there was some, you know, more in-depth kind of stuff that came out. So um, I know I'm missing a few news items that came out that I wouldn't mind talking on the podcast, but I just didn't really get to them too much. So forgive me if this week's, if I miss something that you saw and that I don't report on the podcast. Again, it's just, it was a hectic, a bit of a hectic week for me over here as well. But, um, no excuses. That's not an excuse. But uh, yeah, so just want to throw that out there for all my three listeners. Uh, <laughs> ah, self-loathing. No, that, that, that's not even right. Um, that's not. That's not even right. Anyway, let's move on. The first news item is that um, again, little, some of them. Is, some of these are really quick. Some of these are just um, more extensive. But uh, the first news item for this week: Marvel's Captain Marvel will be an origin story. So, of course, we know that Brie Larson's going to play Captain Marvel. Uh, she may appear in the next Avengers movie. There's talks about that. No one's really sure. But she will get her own movie sometime soon. Uh, in the, Not sometime soon. In the near future. I think it's 2018 when it comes out. I didn't write it down. But I think it's 2018. Uh, of course, Brie Larson's uh, going to star in the film. 
Uh, they have Nicole Perlman who wrote Guardians of the Galaxy. She's writing the f- she's co-writing the script with Meg uh, Lefour. I think that's how you say her name. I could be pronoun- pronouncing that wrong. She also co-wrote um, Pixar's Inside Out. So they're writing the script right now. It's going to be an origin story. It's going to be good. It's Marvel. It's Brie Larson. Come on. All right. So the next news item is that there is going to be a Bad Mom spinoff called Bad Dads. That is set to come out next year. Now, XTX Entertainment, which is a relatively new company in Hollywood. They've probably been going on for maybe like a year or so. Not even a year. Had a surprising smash hit on their hands this summer with uh, their comedy Bad Moms. Which earned a very impressive uh, $170.8 million worldwide off its $20 million budget. That's very impressive. So instead of doing the sequel, which uh, m- probably, uh, many of us probably thought they would make, instead they're going to go with a spin-off called Bad Dads, and it has a release date of June 24th next year. Now the spin-off is only part of what XTX Entertainment is going to do. They're planning on doing like a reality show and digital content, possibly other spin-offs, but right now the main thing is that they're going to make Bad Dads. Now, I think a lot of people aren't on board with the idea of the spinoff. One, because Bad Moms was, you know, about moms being tired of their daily routine and taking care of the family and everything. And then they decide to, you know, just throw caution to the wind and do some, uh, do something crazy. And that was original. That was, that was a somewhat original, that was a somewhat original idea that, we, you know, we haven't seen before. And we see moms who are just tired of it. And the idea of, of a mom going, you know, out there and, getting drunk at night or whatever is different than a father going out because obviously we've seen movies about you know dads or just guys in general going out getting drunk and you know other debauchery we've seen that stuff before with bad moms it was a bit it was a little bit different especially with the cast he brought together and mila kunis kristen bell and katherine hahn but i don't know i'm not completely sold on the idea of a bad dad's movie I liked Bad Moms. I thought Bad Moms was uh, wasn't that bad. It was a lot more funnier than I thought it was going to be. It's one of my surprises of the year, but uh, I don't know. But we'll we'll see what happens. Bad Dad comes out. Bad Dads, sorry, comes out next year. Uh, so assuming that they didn't re- they didn't announce a cast or a writers or director, they just said they were doing it. So it sounds like they're just rushing into this production, which is a really bad sign. But that's what they're doing. Filming uh, again if they're going to make that release date then filming's probably going to start either later this year or potentially early next year, and then they're just going to rush production and start film and, you know, release it on June 24th. And no real surprise, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them will have four sequels. That's right, because Warner Brothers likes lots and lots of money. Warner Brothers released over a three-minute video of footage online and it was there where they announced that the first spin-off slash prequel of the Harry Potter films will be the first of five films. All jokes aside, Warner Brothers liking money, which I'm sure they do. It does look like Warner Brothers has a lot of faith in this new franchise to announce this outright before the first film even comes out. Now, there was a story that came out that this new, uh, this new film, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, was going to set up a trilogy. So there was going to at least be two more films. But now, they're saying the whole new franchise will be five films in total. Is that counting your chickens before they uh, before they hatch? Probably. But uh, again, there is a very vivid... Uh, I don't think vivid was the right word. Rabid was, was the word I was going to use. Fan base for Harry Potter. So, I don't, uh, I don't see them uh, not making any money off these films at all. Ride Along 3 will officially happen. A third Ride Along film is now officially happening thanks to director Tim Story who broke the news on The Wrap saying that writers Phil Hay and Matt Manfredi are hard at work on developing a Ride Along 3 story. He also says that Kevin Hart and Ice Cube are expected to reprise their roles. Other than that, there are no early plot details just yet. For those of you guys that don't follow the films, Ice Cube plays a a no-nonsense detective while Hart plays his new brother-in-law that kind of annoys him along the way. Films didn't receive the best reviews from critics, but were 
otherwise massive successes at the box office. So getting another film in the in this little series isn't completely out of the question, uh, considering again that they were very big successes and they have their fans amongst them. Personally, I didn't think Ride Along 2 was as good as the first one, and even the first Ride Along had its moments, but it was just an okay film. Now, Ride Along 3 is still in the early stages, so there's no word yet on when the film will come out, but considering they're already working on the story, and these films are made pretty much for the cheap, seems, and by the cheap I mean not, you know, this big, expensive, you know, budget that all these other uh, bigger sequel films kind of, kind of make, so... Michelle Williams is in talk for a Janis Joplin biopic. Now, a biopic on the iconic musician Janis Joplin has been in the works for a while now, with actresses like Amy Adams, Renee Zellweger, Reese Witherspoon, and even the late Brittany Murphy were attached at some point to this project. And directors like Lee Daniels, Jean Margavalli, and Catherine Hardwick were also attached to direct at some point. But of course, nothing ever happened. Now it looks like the film is back on track with a new director in Sean Durkin, who directed Martha Marcy May Marlene, which was a, a smash hit in the film festival circuit, and has Michelle Williams in talks to star in the film that will be called Janice. Now Michelle Williams, of course, is a very great actress. She's been film. She's going to be in films later this year. She has certain women coming out, which is a film, by the way, coming out uh, this week. We'll talk about it a little bit later on the podcast. She also has uh, Manchester by the Sea coming out later this year. That's already kind of being, you know, polished and shined up for a big Oscar run, and especially her performance as well, supposedly. Uh, and she's been in films like, uh, I think it was Blue Valentine, I think that's what it was called. But she's, she's a great actress, nonetheless. And uh, she's in talks to, to play Janis Joplin. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Joplin, uh, she of course she was a uh, rock and roll legend. Again, I'm the iconic kind of also fits in that in that in that set in that same sentence. And uh, she sh- she sadly tragically passed away at the age of t- only 27 in uh, in the 70s due to uh, due to a a heroin or a heroin overdose. But uh, but but her life is uh, very. Um, very interesting, and, it, and and it's something that does lend itself to be made into a movie because she was a very big figure at the time, and um, the film will supposedly depict the last six months of her life. So we'll see what, how that kind of happens. And the movie has been, you know, the 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 movie has been again, it's been in production for for a long time, and it's gone through a lot of false starts and delays, and there was even like rights issues at one point. You know, now we have Williams attached to Star, and she, again, she has two big movies coming out, Manchester by the Sea, if that does as well as many people expect it to be, whether it be in the box office or during the Oscars, I think this could really push the Janice uh, Joplin biopic to finally get made. So we'll, we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens with that. There's no production date announced just yet again. She's only in talks for the film, so we'll see what happens. The Lion King remake gets a writer. Disney is moving forward. Fairly quickly with their new iteration of The Lion King that will be directed by John Favreau, who of course directed their smash hit The Jungle Book earlier this year. The Hollywood Reporter reports that Jeff Nathanson has been hired by Disney to pen the screenplay for the film. Nathanson already actually has a history with Disney as he wrote the newest Pirates of the Caribbean film, Dead Men Tell No Tales, that opens next year. The plan is to make the film look like the live action film, of course similar to what they did with The Jungle Book. Again, directed by John Favreau, and ended up being a pretty big hit for the studio. Something I'm sure Disney thinks this new version will, of course, be. Now that they have a writer, it does seem that Disney is fast tracking this film so it can be John Favreau's next film. Now, Favreau was working on the sequel to The Jungle Book, but that might be put on the wayside for now. Now, there's no word yet on a pro- on a potential or possible production date or release date for The Lion King, but since they're fast tracking it. I'm pretty sure we'll probably hear about it sooner rather than later. And speaking of Disney, they are developing a Don Quixote film. Terry Gilliam is probably somewhere off in the mountains yelling, Come on! But um, Disney is developing their own adaptation to the classic novel of Don Quixote from La Mancha. The film will will be written by Billy Ray, who wrote the first Hunger Games film, and Captain Phillips. He also set to produce the film. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, the 1605 novel, yes, that novel is that old, 
the story told of a lower class aristocrat named Alonzo who after reading too many novels about chivalry lost his sanity and comes to believe that knights, maidens, and dragons exist for real. He then knights himself as Don Quixote and sets off on a quest for adventure. Now, sources say the plan is to adapt the, the work in tone that, quote, recalls the madcap and fantastical nature of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean movies, which, of course, are very successful. Not all of them good, but most of them successful. The character of Don Quixote has been adapted many times in the films. There's a lot of Don Quixote films or films that have the character Don Quixote in them. Uh, but one person that has always wanted to bring the character to the big screen was Terry Gilliam. Now, he looked like he was finally going to do his Don Quixote film. Uh, it was supposed to start filming this month, actually. But once again, as many times before, the film was met with a delay that he couldn't foresee. So now he has to wait to get his film made. And in the meantime, it looks like Disney's going to make their own film. And we'll see what happens with that. Let's see. If Disney has more uh, luck on their side than Terry Gilliam. Fetty Alvarez and 10 Cloverfield Lane writer are adapting the comic book Incognito. Now, Fetty Alvarez, the director of the Evil Dead remake, which was very good. A lot, a lot of people gave it a chance, but it was very good. And the film Don't Breathe, which was also very good, is getting together with one of the writers of the surprise hit that came out earlier this year, 10 Cloverfield Lane and Daniel Casey. They are working on the comic book adaptation of Incognito for Sony Pictures. Now, the comic was created by a very big comic book writer named, maybe some of you guys know if you read a lot of comic books, Ed Brubaker and artist Sean Phillips. Now, for those of you guys who don't know the comics, like I do, uh, the comic revolves around the central hero called Zack Overkill, yes, who once served as a supervillain under the main villain of the series, the Black Death. He is now serving the rest of his life under witness protection under the Witness Protection Program as a mail carrier, but Zack suddenly discovers a means by which he can regain his super strength by mixing drugs of all different kinds and develops a conscience and develops a conscience and becomes a vigilante who attracts the attention unfortunately of his former boss alvarez is pretty much two for two at this point at least for me like i said evil dead remake was really good don't breathe was very good and there's no signs uh, there's no signs right now that he would direct but he's at least writing the film which uh is pretty cool and still in the very early stages as for Daniel Casey, he's worked on uh, the script for 10 Cloverfield Lane, although he wasn't credited for the film, unless he used a pseudonym that I didn't know about. But um, he's pretty much still a newcomer in Hollywood, so Incognito would probably be, next to 10 Cloverfield Lane, will be his biggest project to date. Now, there's no word on when Incognito will go into production. It sounds cool, and of course, Sony Pictures is probably uh, gathering up some comic book properties now that, you know, sp now that, they don't necessarily own Spider-Man all to themselves, since he is now part also of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But we'll see what happens with that. Evangeline Lilly will be in Avengers 4, and says that Ant-Man the Wasp has a script. Now, Evangeline Lilly made her debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Ant-Man, playing Hope Prim. Although she didn't become her comic book counterpart in the film, she will be making her debut in the suit and the character, and as the character, I should say, of the Wasp in the Ant-Man sequel, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Speaking of a blaster at New York Comic Con, she said that the that the movie does have a script, although it's not yet approved. But she did mention that she will not be in Avengers 3 because they wanted her appearance in the costume and they wanted essentially her origin story and exploring who this character is to be in a standalone movie being the Ant-Man film. So it's not just her being like, yeah, I'm the Wasp now. No, you don't need to know what happened. No, no, we're, we're good. Let's go fight Thanos. So that seems pretty cool. And she will be in Avengers 4. She did say that she would be in there. Now, of course, she could be in Avengers 3, just not in costume, but we don't know. Nonetheless, you know, Lily, I didn't have a podcast at the time when Ant-Man came out, but I always did think that Lily was, um, eventually Lily, was a good addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I can't wait to see what they, you know, what they do with her character of the Wasp in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because the Wasp, of course, is a very beloved character by many fans, and uh, you can't really have Ant-Man without the Wasp, so we'll see what happens with that. Guy Ritchie is in talks to direct a live-action Aladdin film for Disney. The Hollywood Reporter reports that Guy Ritchie, the director of the Sherlock Holmes films and The Man from U.N.C.L.E., and the upcoming King Arthur film coming out next year, is in talks with Disney to direct their live-action adaptation of Aladdin. 
Disney has, of course, been working on a live-action adaptation for a while now, and at one point was planning a live-action prequel for the genie character, although that kind of seems like it fell through because there has been no news off that project in a long time. And uh, now it looks like they're moving forward with uh, with uh, Guy Ritchie, uh, which is a very unex- unexpected choice to do in the Latin film. Uh, the film currently has a script by John August, who has uh, written films like Big Fish, and aims to make a, quote, ambitious and non-traditional take on Aladdin. The studio also inten- also intends to make it a non-linear narrative, which sounds very odd, but at the same time, kind of right up Guy Ritchie's alley. The film will also keeps some of the original film's music and will incorporate some familiar musical elements in the film. Of course, what exactly does that mean? We have no idea yet, but Aladdin, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's Guy, I mean, look, I, I like Guy Ritchie. Uh, I think Man from Uncle was very underappreciated when it came out in theaters. I don't think as many people saw it. I think I know a lot of people probably saw it on DVD, but um, it was it was a, it was really good. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be too. And the Sherlock Holmes films are you know very special, but this is also a man that's directed films like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and Snatch, which were very very good films. But he is a totally unexpected choice to do an Aladdin film. But Obviously, I mean, he's going to have to tone a lot of his guy richiness down, but uh, totally unexpected choice. He's only in talks right now. If that deal somehow comes through and materializes, I will be very surprised and I will be front of the line to see how they do a Guy Ritchie Aladdin film, to be honest. Universal's The Wolfman gets a writer. Now, Universal Studios is going to start their new Universal's Monster Shared Universe with the Mummy next year, which actually stars Sofia Bontella. She was in uh, most recently in Star Trek Beyond. She was in Kingsman. She played the one. She played Gazelle, the one with the the uh, the two uh, the, the amputee with two razor sharp legs. She's going to play the Mummy. Uh, the film also stars Tom Cruise as the human character, trying to, of course, take her down and stop her. But now it looks like Universal is moving on with their next film since The Mummy is already done filming. And that movie happens to be The Wolfman. Now the studio has bought in a new writer in David Callahan, who will work on the already written script that was written by Aaron Guzukowski. I think that's how you say his name. He uh, he wrote Prisoners that came out, I believe it was, I think now it's three years ago. And that was a really great film. He hasn't seen Prisoners, Jake Gyllenhaal, Hugh Jackman. Uh, Melissa Leo, uh, amazing cast, and a uh, more amazing film. So they bought him in. There's no details yet on the film, but you can probably assume that that's going to follow kind of the same formula as the original Wolfman films. And we'll probably get a sense of the tone uh, when we see The Mummy next year, because, you know, they all got to fit in the same universe, so they'll probably all have that same kind of uh, tone and feel to it. However, to give you guys a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a tidbit, Callahan is known for sticking to the action genre. He wrote the first Expendables film. He wrote uh, Doom, which was the video game adaptation. He wrote, he uh, he did the story for the most recent Godzilla film. And he has the Amazon series Jean-Claude Van Johnson. Yes, stars Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's a very... The, the pilot... I don't know if the pilot's still up, uh, but I saw the pilot and it was very, very funny. So... He's he's got a hand in both comedy and action. He also will co-write Zombieland 2, which is in production over at Sony Pictures. Now, early rumors said the studio wanted Dwayne Johnson to play the new Wolfman. And as much as I love The Rock, I, I've always talked about how my love for The Rock here on the podcast. Every time we talk about him, every time we talk about him, uh, the casting seems a little bit too much. I love The Rock. But the character has always been kind of looked at as a mild-mannered, man before changing into this monster and not saying the rock can't pull that off and it would be cool to see him as the wolf man and even um the 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 character which is blanking on me uh talbot is the last name can't think of the first name but i think this is uh the first time that and probably the only time i will ever say this i don't think the rock should play the wolf man in the movie but that's just me i I don't know Universal Pictures does intend on getting A-listers for their universe as they already have Johnny Depp set to, pl- set to play the Invisible Man. They have Russell Crowe who will make his debut in The Mummy as Dr. Jekyll, who of course will end up somewhere down the road playing Mr. Hyde. And they have Javier Bardem 
set to play Frankenstein's monster. Now, they also had Angelina Jolie in talks to play the bride of Frankenstein, although it seems that that may not be the case anymore because she's kind of, her name hasn't been circling with all these recent reports on the uh, Universal Monster Shared Universe recently. You know, other than that, they still have. St- They still have two other characters so far. They have the creature from the Black Lagoon, and they have Dracula. Now, there's some mixy washer reports that maybe Luke Evans, uh, Luke Evans' Dracula from Dracula Untold would be a part of this new uh, franchise, although that's not confirmed yet, so we'll hold off on that. But the Wolfman does currently have a release date for April 13th, 2018. We'll see what happens with uh, the Universal Shared Monsters. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Universal Monsters from back in the day. You know, the Lon Chaney's, the Bela Lugosi's, the, um, Bor- uh, the Boris Karloff's. And th- those movies, I don't know, there's just something about those movies that are really special. And it's one of those, it's one of those film franchises that kind of was originally the, the original shared universe. You know, Marvel takes a lot of the credit nowadays for creating these shared universes. But the Universal Monster films... Those were kind of the original shared universe uh, back in the day. So um, Universal just going back to their own stopping grounds and seeing the monsters told in a modern day setting because all these films are going to be told in modern day seems kind of interesting. And now I'm very interested interested to see how they take it. And I hope that they all turn out very good. I mean, they're going for A-listers, so you know they're not going to you know just put any Joe Schmo uh, on the big screen and in their films but um, yeah we'll see uh, we'll see what happens with um, with the new Universal Pictures um, shared universe this is a news item that I that I heard and I really um, I really got bummed out because this is something that I was really looking forward to Benicio Del Toro has dropped out of the Predator Son of a bitch. but they've also added Boyd Holbrook to the cast now, the Shane Black directed Predator's, Pr- Predator, Predator, Predator sequel called The Predator has just lost one of its main attractions in Benicio Del Toro. As reports say, the Del Toro has dropped out of negotiations of the film due to, of course, scheduling issues. However, the studio has lined up another actor in Boyd Holbrook, who is also someone we'll talk about later on the podcast. The reports state that Fox struggled with casting Del Toro in the film from the very beginning even pushing the start date back to February to accommodate his other films, but still couldn't resolve the issue when the other film commitments shifted again. Now that they've lost Del Toro and added Holbrook, Fox is planning on beefing up the supporting cast, but the plan was always to make the film an ensemble cast, and nothing against Holbrook. I, I've seen Holbrook in just a few few little uh, films here and there, but he's no Benicio Del Toro. And it seemed like when they first announced that Benito Del Toro was going to be in the film, you know, they were going to su- surround him with a very good, again, an ensemble cast. And um, that, that was a, that was really exciting. I was really, I mean, I was already looking forward to a, no, to a new Predator film. And, and Shane Black being attached uh, did kind of up my excitement a little bit since he was in the first Predator film and even did some some script work for that film. But um, I don't know. I mean, losing Benito Del Toro, that's, that's a huge hit. Because, I mean, it's Benito Del Toro. He's a really great actor. But, of course, Benito has, you know, the, Guard- the Guardians of the Galaxy films. He's got Star Wars Episode Eight, which he's going to be a part of. He's got the Sicario sequel. And, you know, probably some other projects that uh, we don't know about. So, it's a bummer. But they did find Boyd Holbrook, I guess. I, he's, the, he's the big name this week, by the way. So... We'll see what happens. Like I mentioned, Shane Black will direct the film off a script that he co-wrote with Fred Decker, who wrote The Monster Squad, but no other plot de- no other plot details are revealed just yet. The film aims to begin filming next year with the release date of February 9th, 2018. Jurassic World 2 will bring a new aspect to the dinosaurs. Jurassic World 2, not the official title by the way, is currently in the planning stages and we don't know too much about the film other than stars of Chris Pratt's and Bryce Dallas Howard will return. The film will also be directed by new director J. A. Bonilla, who uh, he uh, he direct he will he has directed a film that's coming out later this year called The Monster Calls. Everyone that's seen it so far has been saying it's really really good. So there's that. He also directed The Impossible. I think that the movie, I think that's what the movie was called. The movie about the uh, the tsunami 
uh, with Naomi Watts and uh, Ian McGregor. I think he was in that film. Uh, however, the original director of the film, Colin Trevorrow, who will be a producer on the sequel and will co-write the sequel as well, he's given some new details uh, of the film. Now, earlier comments about the film, I think it was, I don't know if it was him or if it was uh, the, the new director, said that the film would be scarier, whatever that means. I don't know what that means. But uh, Trevorrow has given some new details. He was speaking at a film festival in Spain and he said this. Dinosaurs will be a parable of the treatment animals receive today. The abuse, medical experimentations, pets, having wild animals in zoos like prisons, the use the military has for them, animals as weapons. The second part will be a very different movie that will explore new paths. For that, re- for that reason, it was clear that it needed to be Bonega who directed the film in order to have it grow and evolve with his, ver- with his own or with his very personal vision. So that should be interesting. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know how. Uh, I don't even know where to even think about what they're gonna do with that. But uh, that was teased a little bit in the first one. Even you know, Chris Pratt's character was very against uh, Vincent D'Onofrio's character in the film using the Raptors as uh, as military ex- uh, military weapons. And we even saw in the monitors in the secret room that belonged to B.D. Wong's character, the scientist from the fir- from the very first film, Jurassic Park. Who came back in this one? Uh, you know, he had um, he had some stuff on the monitors that seemed very interesting. So that was kind of teased a little bit in the first one. I'm sure that's kind of where you know they they got the idea, and that was something that they wanted to explore in the sequel. But uh, this idea that the you know the dinosaurs would be a parable of the treatment that animals receive today that's uh, that's interesting. You know, and, and it's I didn't even know you know again like I mentioned I didn't even know where you know to even think about going. You know what. I'm, I'm completely lost at this moment. I can't even put a sentence together. Uh, you know, I can't even think about, you know, how they would go about that in the film. So, it should be interesting to see. Um, you know, uh, again, the, 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 new direct, the new director they have, you know, he, he's a very um, visionary director. And he's one that people are very, very excited about in Hollywood. So, we'll see what he does with Jurassic World 2. Jurassic World 2 will open in theaters on June 22nd of 2018. Now here's the other controversial news item that I was that I mentioned earlier. Disney's live action Mulan avoids quote controversy. And I'm using quotes in my own my own way. Now some were already weary about a live action Mulan film. However, there was a report that came out that had some details of a leaked spec script that had everyone up in arms, and at first glance, it was well deserved. Now, the leaked script had the film focusing on a 30-something European traitor that falls in love with Mulan, who then joins the Chinese Imperial Army to protect her. So, yes, they essentially took away what made Mulan, well, Mulan. Dishonor! Dishonor on your whole family! However, a new report says that will not be the case, so everyone can settle down. An anonymous source released a statement to Vulture saying the spec script was a jumping-off point for this new take on the story that draws from both the literary ballad of Mulan and Disney's 1998 animated film. Mulan is and will always be the lead character in the story, and and all of the primary roles, including the love interest, are Chinese. For those who don't know, Mulan was an actual person, although we don't, or I don't know, you know, how much of it, uh, you know, Disney carried over. But of course, Disney, of course, Disney fight it and made it their own thing. With, you know, a good attempt. It was a good movie. However, I can see why many, mostly, at least from all the outcry that I saw on Twitter and everything, were mostly Asian Americans would be upset at this, since it is taking a hero, a female hero, at that, and basically turning her into pretty much a side character and a supporting character in her own self-titled film. You know, and making her love interest a white man, in this case, and, you know, just making him do all these things for her. Now, that being said, Disney announced that they are doing a global casting search for Mulan, so we'll see where that goes. And again, the anger is justified, because let's face it, they're, they're again, they're, they, all the mentions I just said, and all the white worship, all the whitewashing, you know, controversies going on in Hollywood at the moment. However, and then this is the part where I'm prepared to get a lot of hate thrown at me. It was only a spec script. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what a spec script is, it's also known as a speculative screenplay. It is a script where a writer or writers write their own script without a studio attached or even their knowing, and hopes that once it's done, 
they can send it around Hollywood and see if anyone wants to make it, produce it, and, and finally buy it. So the Mulan script was never actually commissioned or written under Disney's knowing. Unless it was, and they were like, yeah, go ahead, write your own thing. But that's not usually how spec scripts work. Now, the statement released by Vulture does make it sound like Disney took the script and will be making changes to fit the overall vision of what they want to do for their version of Mulan. Of course, they're probably going to change everything, considering that the lead hero was a white man falling in love with a Asian woman, which uh, Yellow Fever was a thing that I saw being thrown around online. Now, Disney does have, when they uh, essentially when they bought the spec script, they bought in new writers. Two of them were Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver. Now, they had a hand in writing the new Planet of the Apes films, which are very good, and even had a hand in writing Jurassic World, which I just talked about. So it's not like they were using the same writer that wrote the spec script and telling him, hey, change your whole script so we can do our own, so we can make it more like this, or hey, we're using your script, uh, here's your money, go on your merry way. It's not the case. I get why people are angry, and at the same time, I can't disagree why, why people would be angry. I would be angry too if that was what they ended up doing. However, it was only a spec script. What people saw was not a script made by Disney. And I saw a lot of hate being thrown at Disney because it just, the, the, title, of the, the title of the script I think was like The Legend of Mulan. And everyone was really upset about that. So everyone that I saw online, on Twitter, uh, some people on my, on my Facebook account were very upset that Disney was making this script wasn't the case. If people actually did some more digging, they would find out that it was a spec script and that they've hired new writers and that, again, this was not the original idea by Disney. At the same time, again, I can see why people are angry if they just saw that, if they just took everything for what it was at face value. And again, I would be upset too if that was the changes they would be making because Mulan means, Mulan still to this day means a lot to some people, especially to Asian Americans or even just other people. Who knows? But... I want to throw it out there. It was always just a spec script. It was never a script written by Disney or someone that, you know, Disney said, hey, write this script for us. That's not how spec scripts work, at least from what I from from what I know. So just want to put that out there. But for all of you that were very upset over this, just let it be known. Just want you guys to know Mulan will have an Asian cast. I'm probably sure they'll probably throw in a few white people in there just because they want to sell the movie to non Asians. That that was a weird sentence just, that just came out of my mouth. Nonetheless, <laughs> live action Mulan movie is scheduled to come out in November 2018 with an Asian cast. So you can all rest easy for the time. And the final news item of the day is about the third Wolverine film called Logan. And we have some new character details that have emerged. And also, Mr. Sinister may not appear in the film after all. Now, the rap has released a few new character details about the third Wolverine film again, called Logan. First, early in the week, it was announced that Boyd Holbrook, hey, there's that name again, will be playing one of the villains in the film called Donald Pierce, the head of the security of Transigen, the organization responsible, again, for making mutants into killing machines in the future setting for the film. Now, Pierce in the comics was a mutant-hating, uh, pretty much genocidal maniac, who turned, or actually who joined the Hellfire Club, which is a very big prominent group of mutants in the comics, as a way to kill them all because, again, he really, really hates mutants. However, the biggest characteristic that he has is that he's a cyborg. His artificial limbs grant him pretty much super strength and resistance to damage, and he's also the leader of, an assa of a group of assassins known as the Reavers, who were also rumored to be in the third Wolverine film for some time. So there you go. There, so they also released a, a picture of him, very Mad Maxi. They, uh, well, that's kind of how all the pictures have been looking. They, they haven't. The, the Wolverine, the Logan, I should say, at this point, has an Instagram account where they've been, you know, kind of releasing pictures here and there, and they're all kind of really in black and white. And they released a picture of Donald Pierce, kind of just chilling there in a car, and uh, it just had the the word Pierce, and kind of the rap kind of picked up on that, and you know did some digging and they found this out so Donald Pierce is in the film and the Reavers are in the film it looks like maybe we'll find out but we know that at least he's in the film another character that we know a little bit more about which is another rumored character called X-23 the reports say the little girl teasing the poster is a young girl named Laura and for comic book fans they know 
who that Laura is, and Laura Kinney, who is in fact the mutant X-23. Now for those who don't know, X-23 was an experiment similar to Wolverine and Logan, and it gave her powers similar to Wolverine, like healing factor, superhuman strength, senses, speed, and reflexes, and she also has adamantium claws. However, she only has two instead of three, and she will be played by a newcom- a newcomer, a young actress, named Sienna Novikov, and their only other credit is an uncredited role in Daddy's Home, the Mark Wahlberg, Will Ferrell comedy that came out last year. Now, when it comes to Richard E. Grant and who he's playing, the speculation that he will be playing Mr. Sinister has pretty much just gone out the window because that won't be the case. The rap reports that Grant will play a character called Dr. Xander Rice, and Rice is a scientist in charge of transigen. Now, this follows an early character description for Grant when he joined the project, saying that he was a villainous mad scientist, which pretty much fits the bill. Now, the character in the comics does have a history with Wolverine, so I won't go too much into detail in case they decide to actually use that history in the film. I will say, though, that Xander Rice's comic book con- counterpart and making him be a part of Logan, it makes a lot of sense. Especially, again, if they go down that route. But, nonetheless, he's not playing Mr. Sinister. And speaking of Mr. Sinister, another bit of a bummer this week. The rap says that Mr. Sinister will not appear in Logan, despite what Brian Singer said in the commentary track for X-Men Apocalypse. The outlet says that the fan-favorite villain, Mr. Sinister, will not appear in Logan, but they don't rule out a possible post credit scene, or maybe that he's just a big bad behind the scenes, although Logan already seems kind of packed up with villains with Donald Pierce and Dr. Xander Rice and maybe even the Reavers, so it kind of makes sense that maybe... Mr. Sinister will not appear. It is a bummer, you know, because I think a lot of people were very excited, unless they it's just a ploy and be like, no, he's not going to be in the film. And then he kind of just pops up out of nowhere and be like, ha I'm here. Uh, I don't think I'll say it that way, but you know, you know what I mean. Again, it's a bummer. It, it really is. Maybe they're just saving Mr. Sinister for another X Men film down the line. Who knows? Either way, no Mr. Sinister. It, it's, 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 it, it kind of sucks. Logan will be directed by James Mangold, who, of course, directed The Wolverine. And will also star, of course, Hugh Jackman as Logan in his last performance as Wolverine. Patrick Stewart as Professor Charles Xavier in supposedly his also last performance as Professor X. And Stephen Merchant. Logan opens on March 3rd of next year. Get ready. Alright, so that was the last news item, at least at the time of this recording. Of course, we'll we move on to Trailer Talk, which has the new trailer for Star Wars Rogue One. And it looked awesome. It, it looked really, really, really cool. So so Disney decided to drop the trailer very early in the morning. And uh, they released the trailer to the highly anticipated, of course, Rogue One. And it looked, again, it just looked it looked so good. Just, just watch it. It looks really good. Uh, there, we do have a lot more details in this film. We know a little bit more about the film. We know what's the action setting everything in motion we know we saw Jin Erso played by Felicity Jones in the film she um, her father played by Mads Mikkelsen Mads Mikkelsen I should say in the film is um, is the guy that kind of it looks like created or at least built the plans for the Death Star and the the rebellion kind of uh, you know I don't want to say hires that's not really the right word they recruit that's the word I was looking for Jin Erso to you know, steal the plans for the Death Star. That's what the film is about. It's about these rebels who go and steal the plans for the Death Star. The film takes place, of course, before New Hope. So it is a prequel in every sense of the word. And it just looks good. We see, we see a bunch of new footage. It just really pumps you up. It's just, it's one of those trailers that's really, really cool. And it's really, really great. So the link will be down below if you want to go check that out. I recommend you check that out. The trailer will be connected to Doctor Strange, which comes out. I believe Doctor Strange, which comes out. Yeah, it's connected to Doctor Strange, but the trailer dropped today, so if you want to watch it on the big screen, just letting you guys know ahead of time where you can watch that. Alright, so let's move on to this week's releases. We have a few limited releases to talk about. The first one is a one-week-only limited release. It is the new Godzilla film called Shin Godzilla. It is made by the legendary studio Toho, which of course made all the old Godzilla films. And uh, that's coming out for just one week, so 
check your local theaters to see if it's playing near you. I'm sure you can probably, you'll probably be able to find it on demand by the end of the year. But if you want to see it in theaters, it's only playing for one week. It started this week and it goes up until uh, next Wednesday. Yeah, next Wednesday. So check that out if you want to go watch it. The other limited release is Certain Women, based on the short stories by Melly Meloy, I think that's her name. The lives of three women intersect in small town America, where each is imperfectly blazing a trail. The cast includes Kirsten Stewart, Michelle Williams, again we talked about, that, we talked about her earlier, Laura Dern, and Jared Harris. The next limited release is Der Scherto, which is directed by... Jonas Coron, a group of people trying to cross the border from Mexico into the United States, encounter a man who takes border patrol his border patrol duties into his own racist hands. The cast includes Gail Garcia Bernal and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I've been waiting for this film. I saw the trailer last year. It was supposed to come out early this year. For some reason, they delayed it. It looks really good. It really does. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan is playing the the racist character in the film. And Gail Garcia Bernal is playing pretty much the, the, the main character in the film as well, who's trying to escape him. And it looks really, really good. Jonas Coron is obviously the son of... Or not, obviously, if you don't know, is the son of Alfonso Coron, who directed Gravity. Alfonso Coron is actually a producer on this film as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. The last limited release that comes out this week is Christine, and it is a story of the 19. It is a, based on a true story, by the way, a very harrowing true story. We talked about the trailer when this came out. I think it was like a few weeks ago or earlier this month. No, not earlier this month. Last earlier last month. I think that's when we first talked about this project. It is the story of 1970s TV reporter Christine Chubbuck played by Rebecca Hall. The cast also includes Michael C. Hall. This this is a this is the trailer really got to me. The story really got to me. Uh, I actually think I'm going to be watching this film. Uh, I don't know if it's this weekend or uh, sometime next week because the Chicago International Film Festival is in town and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So Christine is one of the movies they're playing at the Chicago International Film Festival and I will be uh, checking this out. So, But if you want to watch it in a limited release in the theater that you know plays this movie you can go uh, check that out it looks really good by the way it really does so i've been hearing some some good things coming out of the film festival circuit so we'll see what happens with that all right so let's get to this week's wide releases the first wide release we have is max steel based on the animated series the adventures of teenager max mcgrath and his alien companion Steel must harness and combine their tremendous new powers to evolve into the turbocharged superhero Max Steel. If you didn't know this movie was coming out, I don't blame you. Because I've seen like maybe three, four commercials on TV for this, if that. And they're always on some weird time. And this movie is not getting a big, a big push. This movie has been in the works since I think 2013, 2014. No. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. Uh, so this movie's been in the works for a while. No, I, you know what? It might actually may even be 2012. I don't remember. But this movie's been in the works for a long time. And it's a movie that is getting one of those just little pushes. It got its release date like three weeks ago. And it's just, I don't know, It's there's, there's no real big marketing push for this. If you didn't know this was coming out, I don't blame you. But I don't think it's going to do that well in the box office. Just putting that out there. The next limited release we have, or the next wide release, I should say, is Kevin Hart. What now? It is, of course, the new com- uh, new uh, comedy show film by Kevin Hart, where he performs in front of a crowd of fifty thousand people at Philadelphia's outdoor venue Lincoln Financial Field. And there's uh, there's also a um, kind of a little bit of a a little bit of kind of a a placeholder before the the stand up routine. That uh, stars Halle Berry, Don Cheadle, and and uh, Kevin Hart as well. And uh, it, I don't know, it looks it looks pretty funny. I mean, I've never seen a comedy uh, stand up film like a st- like stand up film. Obviously, it's comedy, but I've never seen like a stand up film in theaters. And I don't know, I just there's something about watching that. I don't know. There's just something about watching a stand up routine in a theater as a, as a movie. I don't know. It's just I've I've never seen any of those. And I like Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart kind of Kevin Hart's kind of grown on me over the last few years. But uh, it looks funny. Yeah, some of the some of the stuff that I've seen the trailers and stuff, it looks really pretty funny. But there's that. And finally, the last wide release this week is The Accountant, directed by Gavin O'Connor, who directed Warrior. A mad savant, played by Ben Affleck, uncooks the books for a new client as the Treasury Department the Treasury Department closes in and the body count starts to rise. 
The film also stars Anna Kendrick, John Bernthal, J.K. Simmons, Jeffrey Tamborn, and John Lithgow. Film looks pretty good, not gonna lie. Looks really good. Seeing Ben Affleck as uh, his own Jason Bourne-like character seems pretty cool. It looks like he, you know, he's a mad savant. It looks like he also has a... Uh, some sort of, um, I think it's like, I think I've been hearing Asperger's a lot from some people, so that kind of looks what he ha- like what he has as well. But I don't know. Uh, the film looks good nonetheless. It looks like a really great uh, action thriller. Seeing, again, seeing Ben Affleck as a, this kind of looks pretty kick ass assassin. You got Anna Kendrick in there. You got John Bernthal. You got J.K. Simmons. You got uh, Jeffrey Tambor and John Lithgow. It looks really good. Uh, that's one of the movies that I'm. Uh, Looking forward to watching this weekend. If I have time because of the Chicago International Film Festival, uh, I have a lot of movies to kind of catch up on. So there's a lot of very busy this weekend watching movies because I'm a nerd. Uh, So, so yeah, those are your movies coming out this week. The Accountants, Kevin Hart, What Now, Max Steele, Limited Releases, Christine, Certain Women, Desierto, and if you want to go check out the new Godzilla film by Toho, it is... uh, a one-week affair, so be on the lookout for that. It's not playing everywhere, so be aware of that. It is a limited release, after all. All Alright, so let's move on to this week's box office predictions. Last week, my box office predictions were off, because I thought that there would be enough people that would be able to overlook uh, another controversy. A very controversial week this week and last week, but that was not the case. Although, I'm not surprised that the movie didn't make the top five. So, my picks last week were The Girl on the Train, number one, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children in number two, Deepwater Horizon number three, The Birth of a Nation in number four, and The Magnificent Seven at number five. Last week's actual box office was The Girl on the Train, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, Deepwater Horizon, The Magnificent Seven, and Storks. And the new movies that came out last week, Birth of a Nation came out at number six, and Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life came in at number seven. So, uh, Birth of a Nation, I haven't seen Birth of a Nation yet, I, I want to go watch it. Uh, I, I, uh, like I mentioned last week, I think the story of Nat Turner, the person who was being focused on in the film, is still a story that should be told, And um, but, you know, pe- people will make their own judgments. So, I want to go watch that. I still haven't seen Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I really go. I really want to go watch that. And The Girl on the Train, was uh, it was okay. Uh, I have a mini review up on my WordPress account, reviewing The Girl on the Train, Storks, Deepwater Horizon, which I really loved as well, and I really love Storks too, surprisingly, and uh, Masterminds. So I have a mini, mini review of my WordPress account. I'll give a link a little bit later as I end the podcast. But, but uh, yeah, so that's it. So this week's box office picks, prediction picks, I should say. Uh, I think the accounts will be number one. I think Kevin Hart's What Now will be number two. I think The Girl on the Train will be number three. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children will be number four. And at number five, I think it's going to be a battle between Deepwater Horizon and Storks. I say that because Storks is the only animated film out in theaters, and it managed to bump itself back up to the top five last weekend because, again, there was no real kids movie out this weekend. So, And Miss Peregrine, I think, is still getting some good word of mouth, so is Deepwater Horizon. But uh, it should be interesting to see which one of those movies stays in the top five because there's no real kids movie out right now. Miss Peregrine, you can make the argument for, but you know, kids like talking animals, so they're gonna go, they're gonna want to go watch Storks. So that's gonna be a little battle between the top five. I don't think Max Steel, obviously, with the the lack of promotion it has, will make it into the top five in any way. But um, we'll we'll see. So my picks. The Accounts in number one, Kevin Hart's What Now, number two, The Girl on the Train, and number three, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, number four, and I think Deepwater Horizon and Storks will battle it out for the top five position. If I had to pick one, I think I would pick Storks, May- again, just mainly off the fact that there is no animated, real animated kids film that comes out this weekend, so there you go. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining me on the podcast this week again. It was a, it was a weird week for me again. A little bit busy over here on my end, but um, I tried to put the podcast as as, as together as I could. And if you uh, if you weren't if you weren't pleased by this week's podcast, I don't blame you. Neither neither am I. Although I'm never pleased with anything in my life. So. <sighs> self-loathing no um anyway uh thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week you guys have been great and as always if you want to stay up to date on what we're going to talk about on the podcast 
and what we maybe we don't talk about on the podcast. You can go over to Facebook and uh, go like my page that we made for the podcast. It's at facebook.com slash movie pits, facebook.com slash movie pit. A link will be down below in the description slash show notes area. If you want to go, go actually click on the link. Also, you can find my written reviews and more blog posts and movie thoughts and stuff like that over on my WordPress account, which is movieswithchris.wordpress.com, movieswithchris.wordpress.com. Again, link will be down below if you want to go actually click a link in the description slash show notes area. Also down below are all the trailers that came out this week. I will try to keep up to it. I know some trailers came out this week, but the only real big one that I focused on was... The trailer for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. The trailers for uh, Power Rangers and John Wick Chapter 2 will be right there uh, down below in the description area with the Rogue One trailer. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you guys go click on those and watch them. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. That's, uh, that's all the movie news I have, again, at the time of this recording. I am recording this podcast a little earlier than I usually do because uh, it's, it's been a hectic week this week for me and I just wanted to make sure I get a podcast out this week. So if, uh, again, if any big news items come out after the podcast, we'll talk about it here on the podcast next week or you can just, again, go to the Facebook page and get a, get a little heads up on that. So thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week again. You guys have been great. You guys have been awesome and I can't wait to hear can't wait to uh, see what you guys think let me know down below what movies are you looking forward toward this week what was your favorite news item was there a news item that i didn't talk about that you saw that i didn't talk about and you want to talk about you know just leave your general thoughts down below in the comment section and uh or in tweet fashion depending on where you're getting this link from and uh and yeah so thank you guys so much for listening once again as always have a safe fun weekend and go watch some movies all right